right. Well, welcome to uh, Chetwin Baptist Church. We're glad to have you here. Would you uh, stand with us as we uh, worship? Bless the Lord, oh my soul, oh, oh, oh my soul. Worship His holy name. Sing like never before. And oh my soul, I worship Your holy name. The sun comes up, it's a new day dawning, it's time to sing your song again, whatever may pass and whatever lies before me, let me be singing when the Bless the Lord, oh my soul, oh my soul, worship His holy name, it seemed like never before, oh my soul, I'll worship Your holy name. You're rich in love and you're slow to anger. Your name is great and your heart is kind. For all your goodness I will keep on singing. Ten thousand reasons for my heart to find. Bless the Lord, oh my soul, oh my soul, worship His holy name. It seemed like never before, and oh my soul, I'll worship Your holy name. And on that day when my strength is failing, the end draws near and my time has come, still my soul will sing your praise unending. Ten thousand years and then forevermore. Bless the Lord, oh my soul, oh my soul, worship His holy name. It seemed like never before, and oh my soul, I'll worship Your holy name. Lord, I'll worship Your holy name. Lord, I worship your holy name. Be thou my vision, O Lord of my heart. Not be all else to me, say. Thou art, Thou my best Lord, by day or by night. Wake ye or sleepy, Thy presence my light. Be Thou my wisdom, and Thou my true Thou my great Father, 
and thy thy true son thou in me dwell thee and I with thee one riches I heed not nor man's empty praise thou mine inheritance now and always thou and thou only are first in my heart high king of heaven my treasure thou High King of Heaven, my victory won. May I reach heaven's joy, so bright, heaven's sun. Heart of my own heart, whatever befall, still be my vision. O ruler of all, be thou my vision, O Lord of my heart. Not be all else to me, save that thou art. Thou my best Lord, by day or by night, waking or sleepy, thy presence, thy light. Would you uh, turn and uh, greet someone this morning and welcome them here? Okay, we'll use this for now. Um, welcome to uh, Chetwin Baptist Church. My name is David McMaster. I am the, uh, the pastor here. And uh, hope you're able to get a uh, bulletin. Uh, if you're new or visiting, we'd love for you to... Um, our annual general meeting is today. After the service, um, we'll be having some burgers and hot dogs uh, shortly after the service today and uh, all are welcome to stay for that and then uh, shortly after that we'll be getting started on some uh, business to do so um, if you're a member please uh, please plan to be there for that uh, this is um, one of the most important ones that we do throughout the year so that's today after the service um, another thing that we have coming up is uh, our soccer camp uh, July 19th to the 21st, um, this will be our outreach in the community. Um, we're going to start advertising a little bit more in the community now. So um, if you'd like to be a part of that, this is for ages uh, 5 to 12. And uh, you can sign up by going to the website. Um, you can follow a QR code. There's a poster at the back as well. But the sign up is through our website. There'll be a form there. Uh, to fill out. So um, if you know people that might be interested in that, um, whether that be volunteering or just attending, um, you definitely spread the word. And if you want to volunteer, we do have a clipboard at the back. You can uh, sign up and then we'll, we'll get in touch with you. Uh, we do have a variety of different ways that you can serve uh, in that outreach. We also have some baptism classes coming up. Uh, this will be not next weekend, but the following weekend. Uh, it'll be June 25th after the service. Um, it'll probably be about half an hour to 45 minutes. And so 
If you're interested in learning more about baptism, um, you can sign up again at the back. We do have a clipboard for that, and uh, we'll be doing that uh, after the service. Um, another thing coming up. This Tuesday, we have a baby shower. Is there a slide for that one? Okay, there it is. Okay, so it's Tuesday, June 13th at 6.30 p.m. Um, all ladies are welcome. Um, it's for baby Anna Sophia. Um, Isaac and Heidi uh, had, had their baby a little while ago, and so this will be the, uh, the shower for them. So um, that's this Tuesday, uh, and it's uh, at 6.30 p.m. Bring finger food. And... Uh, Josh had mentioned that we also, there's a youth event, this, um, f oh, family event, okay. So family paint night on Friday, uh, do you know what time? Okay, so 6.30, um, you can go on our Facebook page, there's a little bit more information, or you can go talk to Josh uh, after the service as well. As far as I think that's all the announcements we have today. At this time, we're going to open it up. If you have any um, prayer requests or praise items that you'd like to share with the congregation, uh, this would be a great time to do so. Yep. So praise item for the wind changing. And now go in the other direction. Okay, yeah, we'll keep praying for that. Yeah. Oh, yeah, prayer. there is a prayer group tonight uh, at 7 p.m. here at the church. Uh, all are welcome to join that as well.
I love you, Lord. Oh, your mercy never fails me. In all my days, I've been held in your hands. From the moment that I wake up until I lay my head, I will sing of the goodness of God. All my life you have been faithful And all my life you have been so, so good With every breath that I am able I will sing of the goodness of God I love your voice You have led me through the fire In darkest night You are close like no other I've known you as a father I've known you as a friend And I have lived in the goodness of God All my life you have been faithful And all my life you have been so, so good With every breath that I am able And I will sing of the goodness of God Your goodness is running out it's running after me Your goodness is running after It's running after me With my life laid down I surrender now I give you everything Your goodness is running after It's running after me And all my life you have been faithful And all my life you have been so, so good With every breath that I am able And I will sing of the goodness of God And I will sing of the goodness of God And I will sing of the goodness of God We are a moment, you are forever, Lord of the ages, forever for time. We are a vapor, you are eternal, love everlasting, reigning on high. And to Be unto your 
place and we can uh, sing about your holy name. God, you are set apart and we thank you that we can come to this place and worship you because of what Christ has done for us on the cross and we are thankful for that. Lord, as we open up your word this morning, I pray that you would speak to us. I pray that you would fill us with your Holy Spirit, that we would have understanding and wisdom and, and Lord, that you would grow us deeper in our faith. Lord, I pray as the kids go off that you would speak powerfully to them. Help them to understand and have hearts to receive. Lord, I pray for the teachers as they, as they teach as well. Lord, I pray that you bless this time that we have together in your holy and powerful name. Amen. You may be seated. Uh, kids, you can go off with Anna and Stephanie. Check, check, one, two. Working? Okay. Well, welcome here. Um, if you're new or visiting as well, uh, we're glad to have you joining us here this morning. Uh, my name is, is David, and I am uh, the pastor here. Uh, my prayer today is that, um, that Jesus would meet you wherever you're at, whether you're a, a Christian, um, long-time Christian, new Christian, whether you're just exploring Christianity, um, I'm, I'm praying that the Lord would speak to you through the, the songs and the, uh, the word that's preached and uh, the, uh, the scripture that's read, uh, and even through one another. Um, we are continuing in our Gospel of Matthew series. We are looking at the King and the Kingdom. If, uh, if you remember last week, we, uh, we started chapter 10. And uh, Jesus, we saw Jesus sending out the 12 apostles to go on a, a specific mission to some of the different um, Jewish communities around the area. And he, he gave a number of instructions, including what to preach, um, what to bring, what not to bring, and how to respond if a town rejects them. Um, and so he gave a, a few warnings also to those who, who do reject them. Now this week we are... applicable to us. There's a number of instructions and uh, warnings and even promises that Jesus is going to give us as we're witnesses to him. And so um, before I, we get into the passage, um, I want to just preface the idea that we are all called to be faithful witnesses of Jesus. Remember the Sermon on the Mount, um, Jesus called his disciples to be salt and light to the world. Um, faithfully representing him wherever they are in the world. And, and it could be, you know, for us, it could be in our workplaces, it could be in your schools, on your sports teams, and in all the places where you interact with those who don't know Christ. Now, at the end of Matthew, Jesus also gives the Great Commission, um, which is relevant to us. And it says, we are to go and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, teaching them to observe everything I have commanded you. So we're called to be on mission as faithful witnesses of Christ. And that looks different from everyone. You, you may be called to go across cultures in, in full-time missionary work, or you may be just called to go across the street and, and, and reach your neighbors. 
Wherever God has you, that is where your mission field is, is at. Now, I preface that because there's some things that we need to know as followers of Jesus on how to represent him well with our lives. First, we need to know how to, to conduct ourselves. Second, we need to be aware of the persecutions that may come as a result of being a faithful witness. And third, we also need to cling to the promises that God gives us as witnesses. And that's what this passage is all about today. So if you have a Bible, open up to Matthew 10. Um, we'll be verses 16 to 31. It'll be on the screen as well. It's Matthew 10, 16 to 31. You can follow along with me on there or, or in your own Bibles as well. It says this, Look, I'm sending you out like sheep among the wolves. Therefore, be as shrewd as serpents and as innocent as doves. Be aware of them because they will hand you over to local courts and flog you in their synagogues. You will even be brought before governors and kings because of me to bear witness to them and to the Gentiles. But when they hand you over, don't worry about how or what you are to speak, for you'll be given what to say at that hour. Because it isn't you speaking, but the spirit of your father is speaking through you. Brother will betray brother to death and father his child. Children will rise up against parents and have them put to death. You will be hated by everyone because of my name, but the one who endures to the end will be saved. When they persecute you in one town, flee to another. For truly, I tell you, you will not have gone through the towns of Israel before the Son of Man comes. A disciple is not above his teacher or a slave above his master. It is enough for a disciple to become like his teacher and a slave like his master. If they are called the head of the house of Beelzebul, how much more the members of his household. Therefore, don't be afraid of them. Since there is nothing covered that won't be uncovered and nothing hidden that won't be made known, what I tell you in the dark, speak in the light. What you hear in a whisper, proclaim on the housetops. Don't fear those who kill the body but are not able to kill the soul. Rather, fear him who is able to destroy both soul and body in hell. Aren't two sparrows sold for a penny? Yet not one of them falls to the ground without your father's consent. But even the hairs on your head have all been counted so don't be afraid. You are worth more than many sparrows. Okay, so what, something I want you to note in the, the Gospel of Matthew is, is that he often compiles thematically, uh, meaning he puts things together that are similar but not necessarily in the exact order um, as they happened. In this case, um, we have some warnings and some promises where, um, that weren't specifically um, for last you out like sheep among wolves. Therefore, be as shrewd as serpents and innocent as doves. Okay, so Jesus illustrates how we to conduct ourselves using a sheep, a serpent, and a dove. And so we're going to talk about each one of those things. First, Jesus says, I'm sending you out to be sheep among the wolves. Um, notice the key phrase. I'm sending you to be sheep among the wolves. I'm, I'm no sheep farmer, but it seems that's a little upside down and backwards. You don't typically send your sheep to the wolves. But you got to remember that the kingdom of God is a, is a little bit different. Jesus does things differently. We have seen that all throughout the gospel of Matthew, but there's always a reason and a plan and a purpose for why Jesus does the things Jesus does. So why does Jesus send his followers to be sheep among the wolves? Well, the simplest answer is that there's many among the wolves who will respond to the gospel of Jesus. And so he sends us as sheep to be witnesses among those wolves. And our call is to be obedience to, obedient to God. Sheep um, are obedient animals. They, they follow the voice of their shepherd. We know that Jesus is our, our good shepherd, and we, we see that in the gospel of John. And we're called to respond to um, our shepherd's voice. 
even if that means going into risky and, and often dangerous situations, even if it means coming up against a wolf. Now, what, what's a wolf? Well, it's those who actively reject and oppose Jesus and, and, and also who lead people astray. And there's lots of wolves out there. And so when Jesus sends you into the world, he's saying there's going to be opposition. When, when, um, which means being obedient may come with persecution. And we'll see that once we get into some of the warnings, we'll see that that can be a reality even for us today. But what does it mean for you and I? Well, well most of us, um, Chetwind is the mission field that Jesus has sent us to be sheep among wolves. And there may be people who outwardly oppose or reject the gospel in our town. And they may try to even hinder you or, or, or persecute you, but our call is to be obedient. Our call is to go where our good shepherd leads us. Why? Because we know that God has a plan and that there are those out there who will respond to the gospel. And he uses you and I. And so that's why he sends us to be sheep among the wolves. And so our call is to be obedient. Second, he says to be shrewd as serpents. Um, serpents are, are intelligent animals. Uh, back in Genesis 3.1, um, it says, Now the serpent was the most cunning of all the wild animals that the Lord had made. The, the serpent was referred to in Genesis as cunning, and in this um, instance, it's shrewd. Now, those two terms are actually quite similar in, in definitions, but one being quite negative and the other one being positive. Cunning is this idea of taking advantage of opportunities using deception. Shrewd is this idea of taking advantage of opportunities using wisdom and intelligence. It's being strategic and, and sharp-witted, but very much in a, in a positive sense. And so Jesus is saying, use the shrewdness of the serpent. Be sharp-witted and strategic. Seek to understand the environment that God has placed you in. Know when to stay, know when to go, know when to speak, and know when to uh, be quiet. Seek wisdom as you represent the gospel to people because there's, there's many different ways and, and strategies and different contexts that you'll find yourself in, and, and not everything works for the same thing. I was encouraged by someone who uh, shared in my community group this past week of, of opportunities that were um, open to him in his workplace by just living out his faith in Christ. And it opened up a number of, of conversations as, as people in, in a pretty dark environment watched him live out his faith. And, and, it, and it created some trust and an opportunity for them to be able to come and ask questions and, and, and talk about faith. That's a great strategy for that environment. It's, it's a bit more of the long game, and it's building trust with coworkers, and, and, and it's but clearly demonstrating the difference that Jesus has made in your life. It's, it's strategic. We're called to be strategic and, and shrewd. Represent your faith in Jesus as faithfully as you can in those places, because that's your, your mission field. And pray that God would open up those conversations and and I've heard of a number of stories of, of that sort of thing happening here, even in the, the mines and some of the mills here, where opportunities have come up because being salt and light is, is going to be incredibly bright to those who are walking in darkness. And that's why these conversations often come up, is people see something different in Christians, and they become interested. They want to know more, and what an opportunity that is. Now, that's one example in one context, but you've got to seek wisdom in, in the context that God places you in. Maybe your, your method in, in, in your context is, is gospel tracts or open-air preaching or, or inviting someone to church or, or uh, inviting someone to an outreach. There's all sorts of different ways, but we're called to seek wisdom. Learn the environment and, and be strategic. To quote uh, Kevin DeYoung, he says, we ought to pursue the course of action we think will best serve the cause of the gospel. So be as shrewd as a serpent. Third, you're to be as innocent as doves. When you're a witness to Jesus, don't give anyone any reason to accuse you. Be as innocent as a dove. Now that, that doesn't mean that you're going to be sinless or perfect, but know that people are watching you. And if, if you preach one thing and you live a different way, well, then they have something to accuse you of. And it actually will hinder your gospel witness. 
But if your life models repentance and a, and a deep love for Christ and you treat people with, with love and a genuine desire for them to know Jesus, well, then no one can accuse you with that. So we need to be careful not to be a hindrance to the gospel, but to be as innocent as doves. Now here's what I want, want you to, to pray through. Is as a witness to Jesus, do the, the characteristics of those animals describe you? Are you obedient to Jesus as, as, a, as going among sheep among the wolves? Are you as shrewd as a, a serpent seeking wisdom and being strate- strategic in the environment that you're in? Are you as innocent as a dove in, in the way you live your life? Is it, a, um, is it helping or hindering the gospel witness? So those are some things for you to, to prayerfully consider in your, your own life. Now, the second thing I want to point you to is some of the warnings that might happen as being a witness to Jesus. Um, one of the things I'm thankful for is the fact that Jesus doesn't sugarcoat the reality of following him. Uh, there's, no, there's never a surprise. He lays it all out on the table, and he doesn't hesitate to tell you what to expect if you, if you follow Jesus. So here's some six sobering realities that might happen to you that are in this passage. First, you could be arrested. Verse 17 and 18 says, Beware of them because they will hand you over to local courts and flog you in their synagogues. They will even be brought before governors and kings because of me to bear witness to them and to the Gentiles. Um, For the apostles, this was a pretty strong reality. Many of them probably would have experienced being arrested. And, And the gospel, it will upset kings and governors. Why? Because Christians hold to Jesus as our king. Jesus is the kingdom that we have our allegiance to. And so that's going to bother those who are in authority that want undivided allegiance. And that's, that's a reality in, in many places in the world. This, uh, this past week, I was reading a magazine that I subscribed to called Voice of the Martyrs. And uh, in Iran, if you're a Muslim who converts to, to Christianity, it's actually against the law. And if you're found out, you can be arrested, um, you can be prosecuted in the courts for crimes against national security. So it's getting pretty close to treason charges for those who convert to Christianity. And so to be a witness in many places may mean you're brought before kings and governors and you're, you're arrested. In our context, that's a little bit less of a reality for, for now. We can still preach the gospel without being arrested here with, with some exceptions. We can, we can own a building for the purpose of gathering as Christians and, and preaching the gospel, and, and the government even gives us tax breaks on it. And so we can still run also community outreach events and things, and we can do things in public for the most part without being arrested. And it's something that we have a privilege here in Canada, but there may be a day when that changes, where the church will have to adapt and and in many countries, it has had to adapt, where, where being arrested is a reality. And, and in that case, what Jesus says is, is, look, it may be an opportunity. He says, when you're brought before governors and kings, you will bear witness to them and to the Gentiles. So again, God always has a plan and a purpose for, for what you go through. And it may be to witness to others in that situation. Second, you may lose family. Matthew 10, 21 says, brother will betray brother to death and a father his child. Children will rise up against parents and will have them put to death. Um, Being a faithful witness may cost you your family. They may reject you. They might count you as as good as dead. And that's a reality that's still around today, even even in Canada. Um, Jesus has to be the most important person in your life. And that might come at the cost of, of many relationships. That, that kind of um, rejection is, is a strong reality, especially, I was, I was reading, especially among the Muslims who convert to Christianity. I was reading um, one story, and uh, I came across a, a Muslim man who converted to Christianity. And it was a, it was a huge blow to that, that Muslim family. Um, this man's wife... Um, ended up, um, who, who the, the wife of the man who converted ended up placing um, glass in his meal and it, and it ended up kidding, killing him. And, and what happened is she became the hero among that family. She became the hero even in that region um, because families may betray families over those who f- choose to follow Jesus, to witness to Jesus. Third, you may be hated. 
Matthew 10, 22 says, you will be hated by everyone because of my name. Um, this one's not really that surprising. Hate is definitely something that you might experience in North America for standing firm on the gospel. And it will happen because our, our biblical worldview and convictions are opposition to the culture's worldview and convictions. And, and you will be hated for standing firm on your convictions. Fourth, you may be driven out of town. Matthew 10, 23 says, when they persecute you in one town, flee to another. Um, this is one that you need to um, prayerfully seek God on. Fleeing is usually because you're in danger. There are times when God calls you to endure and there's times where God will call you to flee. God called Mary and Joseph to flee when they were in danger from Herod trying to, to kill Jesus. And yet in another instance, Jesus was called to endure suffering to the end, which we see him do on, on the cross. And so prayer for wisdom is important here. If, you're, if your life is threatened, you may need to shake the dust off your sandals and move on to the next place. The principle of being shrewd as serpents also applies here. You need to seek wisdom. Snakes know when to retreat from, from danger. Fifth, you may be called evil. Matthew 10, 25 says, it is enough for a disciple to become like his teacher and a slave like his master. If they called the head of the house Belzebul, how much more the members of his household. So um, Belzebul is a reference to Satan. And we've already seen Jesus being accused of working for Satan earlier on in Matthew. And what Jesus is saying is that's probably going to happen to you. People are going to probably call you evil. And I was thinking about that even in our own context. Um, when, when Christians stand on, on biblical convictions and, and gospel truth, one of the things that happens is we're the ones that are called evil. You think about um, in light of even um, recent political and social trends, if we don't agree and, and affirm every worldview, then, then the response is often that, that we're the ones that are evil. But that's not true if we're standing on the word of God. So, so you also need to test everything against the word of God. Make sure that you are standing on the word of God and, and expect that those who aren't are probably going to call you evil. Sixth, you may be killed. Matthew 10, 28 says, don't fear those who kill the body but are not able to kill the soul. Rather, fear him who is able to destroy both soul and body in hell. Death as a result of being a witness to Jesus is a reality for Christians out there. Um, I was reading some stats from Open Doors, an organization that does quite a bit of research on the persecuted Christians. And uh, some data from 2021 estimated that, that 13 Christians, 13 plus Christians a day are executed for their witness to Jesus. Every day, 12 churches or Christian buildings are attacked, and every day, 12 Christians are unjustly arrested or imprisoned, and another five are abducted. Nigeria currently leads the pack by executing 3,530 Christians in one year. And so, in many places of the world, death is a reality of being a witness to Jesus. Not so much in Canada, um, but we do need to then be praying for the, the persecuted church, those who are in those countries who are, are trying to be faithful witnesses to Jesus. Now, we're not called to fear death. Notice that Jesus says, don't fear those who can kill the body. Why? Well, death has no grip on you. When you, when you die, even in, in witnessing um, to Jesus in that moment, you don't need to fear death because in that moment, you'll be in the presence of Jesus. You will be in the best place you could possibly be. Jesus is your greatest reward and death means that you have finished the race and now you're in glory with Jesus forever. So you don't need to fear death. So those are six warnings that we need to be aware of. Um, consider them because depending on where God sends you, those could be a, a reality for your own life. Now the good news is that Jesus also gives us a whole bunch of promises. Uh, and so I want to go through a number of promises that he gives us in this passage. First is there's the promise of the Spirit. Matthew 19 to 20 says, But when they hand you over, don't worry about what to say or to speak, for you will be given what to say at the hour, because it isn't you speaking, but the Spirit of the Father is speaking through you. That's really great news. Um, the Father has given us the, the Holy Spirit who, who lives in us. And the Holy Spirit helps us to witness to Jesus. 
There's been countless times in my own life where I, I, I've been, I didn't know what the words to say and, and I'll pray and all of a sudden um, I'll have verses come to mind and, and words on my tongue that could only be from um, the Holy Spirit speaking through me. If you're in a situation and you're like, I, I don't know what to say, I don't know how to respond to this person, um, pray to God. Pray that the Spirit would, would give you the words to say in those moments and I, and I believe that he will help you do that. Second, there's the promise of salvation. Matthew 10, says, but the one who endures to the end will be saved. Again, that's great news. Jesus himself is the example. He, he endured the cross to the end, making it possible for our salvation. So let us also endure to the end, remain faithful to Jesus to the end. Don't take your, your eyes or your hearts off of him because he is your salvation. Third promise is that Truth will win. Therefore, don't be afraid of them since there is nothing covered that won't be uncovered and nothing hidden that won't be made known. Every evil will be brought to light one day. Every injustice, action, lie, evil intention will be brought to light and will be justly dealt with by God. That's great news. There's nothing that is hidden that will not be one day unhidden. In the meantime, our call is to patiently endure to the end. There will come a day where that will be no more and all that stuff will be brought to the light. Fourth, there's the promise of the Father who cares. Matthew 10, 29, aren't two sparrows sold for, sold for one penny, yet not one of them falls to the ground without your Father's consent? And we believe that God is, is sovereign, that God is in control, and that God cares. He cares about a sparrow. How much more will he care about you? Trust that he will provide, that he will sustain you in, in times of, of persecution and in the hardships that you endure. He might not take it away, but he will be with you and he will help you endure. Fifth, there's the promise of your worth. Matthew 10, 31 says, so don't be afraid. You are worth more than many sparrows. You have worth. You're worth the father crushing his one and only son on the cross for your salvation. He bled and he died and he took and, and paid the debt of your sin that you owed to God. And all you have to do is respond in, in belief and faith in Jesus as, as your Lord and Savior and you'll be saved and you'll be redeemed and forgiven and, and a new creation. Your identity will now be sons and daughters of, of the living God. And why does God do that? Because he deeply loves and he deeply cares for you. So those are some, some promises from this passage and, and probably there's many more you could pull from this passage, but I hope to, that you see that even in light of the warnings, which can be a little bit intimidating, the things that you might go through, God gives you promise after promise to help you sustain to the end, to help you endure to the end and finish the race as a faithful witness of Jesus in whatever context that he sends you into. So before I pray, Remember, be obedient when, Je when Jesus calls.
I will trust my Savior Jesus when my darkest doubts befall. Trust Him when to simply trust Him seems the hardest thing of all. I will trust my Savior Jesus, trust Him when my strength is small. For I know the shield of Jesus is the safest place of all. Jesus, only Jesus, Help me trust you more and more. Jesus, only Jesus, may my heart be ever yours. I will trust my Savior Jesus. He has said his way is best. And I know the path he's chosen leads to everlasting rest. Jesus, only Jesus, help me trust you more and more. Jesus, only Jesus, may my heart be ever yours. And oh, on that cross, how it was seen, I can go now ever trusting in the one who died for me. What can I bring? For your gift is complete So I'll trust you, simply trust you Lord, with every part of me And oh, on that cross And how it was seen I can go now ever trusting in the one who died for me what can i bring for your gift is complete so i'll trust you simply trust you lord with every part of me jesus only jesus Help me trust you more and more. Jesus, only Jesus, may my heart be ever yours. Jesus, only Jesus, help me trust you more and more. Jesus, only Jesus, may my heart be ever yours may my heart be ever yours Christ alone, my hope is found. He is my light, my strength, my soul. This cornerstone, this solid ground, firm through the fiercest drought and storm. What heights of love, what depths of peace. When fears are stilled, when striving cease. My comforter, my all and all, 
here in the love of Christ I stand in Christ alone I took on flesh fullness of God in helpless being this gift of love in righteousness scorned by the ones he came to save till on that cross as jesus died the wrath of god was satisfied for every sin on him was laid here in the death of christ i live There in the ground his body lay, light of the world by darkness slain. Then bursting forth the glorious day, and up from the grave he rose again. And as he stands in victory, since cursed has lost its grip on me. For I am his, and he is mine, bought with the precious blood of Christ. No guilt in life, no fear in death, this is the power of Christ in me. From life's first cry to final breath, Jesus commands my destiny. No power of hell, no scheme of man can never pluck me from his hand. No power of hell, no scheme of man can never pluck me from his hand. Till he returns or calls me home Here in the power of Christ I stand Till he returns or calls me home Here in the power of Christ I stand All right, well, thank you for uh, joining us today. Um, here's what I want to leave you with. Um, is consider the warnings. Remember the promises of God.